Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's our sports unit today, and we're going to be talking about something that you can do outdoors. That's pretty easy. You can play catch with something called a frisbee, which is also sometimes called a flying disc. Although frisbee is a copyrighted term、uh, by the Whammo Company, but most people still call it a frisbee anyway. Yeah, if it's copyrighted,、um, you have to capitalize it. It's the name、uh, of a product. It's like a Jello. <laughs> Jello is actually a trademark name, so you have to capitalize that as well.、Uh, which reminds me, Tom, we're in Taiwan、uh-huh. and we do a lot of recording, and I often see people will spell Coke with a, a small C, like C O K E. Coke is also a trademarked name. You can't use it like that. If you use Coke, it has to be capitalized.、Uh, but if you want to、uh, say what kind of soft drink or pop that is, we call it a cola with a small c. Enough about trademarked names. We're going to talk about frisbee throwing, or throwing, which I don't consider it a real sport. It's just kind of a recreational activity,、uh, something that I do if I go to the park. We often take a frisbee along, especially if we have a dog with us, because dogs love to catch frisbees.、Uh, if they can,、uh, my dog was unable to do that.、Uh, my dog was good at catching tennis balls. Oh, cool! But not frisbees so much.、Uh, but I do see people throwing frisbees to their dogs in riverside parks here in Taipei. Yeah, they、so. have to. They have to be able to to really jump. Uh, yeah, I、frisbee. think they also need to be trained as well. So cute, but it can be a lot of fun. So let's talk about frisbees, the fun flying disc. Let's get to it. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson right now. When people head to a park or a beach, some just want to relax. They'll sit and listen to the waves breaking, the wind in the trees, and other sounds of nature. Others, however, Want to have some fun, so they often take a frisbee with them. This aerodynamic disc has been providing people and dogs with fun and exercise for decades. The idea for the frisbee came from throwing metal pie plates and cookie tin lids around for entertainment. A Californian named Fred Morrison sold the plates cheaply on the beach in the late 1930s. Before coming up with his own design, he called it the Pluto platter, as it looked like a flying saucer. A toy company, Whammo, approached him and helped him develop and market the disc. Around the same time, college students in Connecticut, U.S., were throwing pie plates made by a local bakery called Frisbee. This name stuck for the new design. But Whammo changed the spelling a bit, ending up with frisbee. Although many people just skim frisbees back and forth, there are numerous competitive sports that can be played with them. For example, there's ultimate frisbee, in which two teams compete. Points are scored when someone catches the frisbee in the opposing team's end zone. Then there's frisbee golf, also called Disc golf, where participants aim at basket-like targets. Like golf, the player's scores depend on how many throws it takes them to reach each target. Even dogs have their own frisbee sport. Players throw frisbees to their pets, who catch them in agile and acrobatic ways, and are awarded a score. New varieties of frisbee games are being invented all the time. It's amazing how this simple invention has provided so much fun in so many different ways. Okay, guys, we're talking about frisbee. I think everybody in the world knows what a frisbee is.、Uh, it's a fun flying disc. It's true.、Uh, this word disc, you don't see it much、uh, anymore these days, but. You know, we used to have、uh, CDs. I guess we still have some CDs,、um, and they are actually made on a disc as well. It's a flat, thin, circular object,、um, and that's what a disc, a flying disc, is or a frisbee. So we've got uh, different uh, scenarios here. We've got people heading to a park 
or maybe when you have free time, you want to go to the beach, and some just want to relax.、Uh, I was laughing when I saw this because I just like to go and sit on the beach in the sand, listening to the waves. Maybe take a book. I love taking a book and a big umbrella so you don't get sunburned. But other people, once they get out there in a park or on a beach, notice their different prepositions. You're in the park, on a beach. Some people like to get up and move around, and frisbee is just an easy way to get a group of people together to、uh, kind of, you know, work up a little bit of sweat, get some exercise in, and have a good time laughing. Yeah, I'm not much of a beach person myself, but I guess I do enjoy going to the beach in Kending if I ever go down there. But、uh, of course, a lot of people go to the beach to go swimming or to get a suntan or maybe to listen to the waves. Or if they go to a park like Da An Park here in Taipei, they'll listen to the wind in the trees or maybe the birds singing and stuff like that. Others, however, want to have some fun, so they often take a frisbee. With them, maybe some people try to play beach volleyball as well, or maybe、yeah. go surfing on the beach, or do windsurfing or something like that. But something really simple to do with your family or friends is to bring a frisbee with you and simply play catch with the frisbee. What is a frisbee? We also call it a flying disc. But this aerodynamic disc has been providing people and dogs with fun and exercise. For decades, so yes, they take a frisbee with them, and it is an aerodynamic disc. So aerodynamic means it goes through the air usually with ease. It easily goes through the air. Like modern cars are very aerodynamic; they're designed to go through the air、uh, really smoothly without a lot of friction, so they can get good gas mileage. Old cars were not very aerodynamic because gasoline was cheap back then. I guess nobody. Cared about gas mileage, but now cars are more aerodynamic, and discs are designed to fly in the air for long distances. And、uh, of course, people have been having fun with them. And dogs, dogs like to catch frisbees. And if you talk about a decade, well, that's a period of ten years. So frisbees have been around for a long time. For decades, yeah.、Uh, just picturing a dog jumping up in the air, trying to get that frisbee in his mouth, just makes me smile. Uh, especially golden retrievers, they seem to love、uh, having a frisbee thrown at them, so they can jump up and get it. Dogs love to go play. So the idea for the frisbee, where did we get it from? Whose bright idea was that frisbee? And I hope that they got rich off of it. So the idea for the frisbee came from throwing metal pie plates and cookie tin lids around for entertainment. Yeah, this is back in the old days. So try to picture a time in history back in the nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties. People didn't have the kind of toys and games we have today.、Um, a metal pie plate. Everyone has one of these in their house. If you do any baking, making a simple apple pie, you need one of those、uh, metal pie plates or a glass pie plate. But those aren't the kind you want to throw. We had a dog named Maverick, which Tom knows about because I've talked about him before. And at dinner time, he would eat once a day. He was an Irish、uh, Springer Spaniel, kind of a medium big sized dog, medium big, not not medium or big, just medium big. And he would let my mom know it was time for dinner at six thirty. He'd start barking out on the patio, and the kitchen window was right there to shut him up or to let him know she knew. He was hungry. She would take one of those、uh, metal pie plates and throw it through the window, where it would, you know, crash on the brick, the ground, and make a, a noise. And Mav would stop barking because he、Ooh. knew he was in trouble. Well, that's one use for a metal <laughs> pie plate. Yep.、Uh, of course, sometimes we put cookies in a tin, which is a round metal container. What about maybe nine, ten inches across? And then you've got a metal lid on it. So if you take the lid or the top off of it, you can throw it through the air, kind of like a frisbee. Although I must say they don't fly very well. They kind of tilt in the、yeah. air and then crash down. Yeah, yeah. So we've got this Californian. Person from California named Fred Morrison. He sold the plates cheaply 
on the beach in the late 1930s before coming up with his own design. So he was an entrepreneur. He wanted to make some money. So he thought, "Hey, I'm going to take these、uh, these pie plates and these cookie tin lids, and I'm going to go down to the beach, and I'm going to sell them to people because they want to play catch with those objects. I can make some money." But he was probably looking at them flying through the air and thought, "Well, they don't really fly that well. Maybe we need to design something better." Maybe he took、uh, aerospace engineering or something, so he came up with his own design, and he called it the Pluto Platter, <laughs> as it looked like a flying saucer, Phaedia flying saucer.、Yeah. So Pluto, of course. Uh, is well, it's not a planet anymore. It used to be the ninth planet in the solar system. Now it's what just a、uh, an object in the Kuiper belt or something like that. But in any case,、uh, Pluto platter just means something that flies through the air, like the planet Pluto. Kind of a cute name.、Uh, we like to put names together that have that initial consonant matching Pluto platter. They're kind of fun to say. Yeah, it did look like a flying saucer. When we were kids growing up, if we thought we saw something strange in the sky, we didn't think it was from Earth. We would say, "Oh, it's aliens coming, and they have a flying saucer." Because back then, a lot of the movies and TV shows that had these aliens coming to visit us, they always flew in these things that looked like a saucer. So, a toy company, Whammo, which is still around today, they approached him. They approached Fred. This little entrepreneur, and they they actually worked with him to develop and market the disc.、Uh, if you approach somebody, you just come nearer to them, come close to them.、Uh, so if someone approaches you、uh, with a business deal, they're just coming to you with a business deal and trying to convince you、uh, to work with them. So he did. He helped.、Uh, he helped them come up with this idea, and they developed it together. Now around the same time. We had a different group of people, college students in Connecticut. That's on the east coast of the U.S. Connecticut and New York are very close to each other. A lot of people who worked in New York City when I was there actually had homes in Connecticut. They take the train in. Well, this group, these college students, they were throwing pie plates made by a local bakery. Remember, we talked about the metal pie plates, and that that bakery just happened to have the name. Frisbee,、uh, though it was spelled differently than、uh, this company's name is that we use today. Now, this name stuck for the new design. If a name sticks, it just means it's kind of catchy, it's popular, so people continued to use it. So the name stuck for the new design. But Whammo changed the spelling a bit, and it ended up looking like it does today. Frisbee, F R I S B E E. And kind of fun to say frisbee. Yeah, B E E at the end makes it sound like a bee flying through the air. So maybe that was more catchy,、uh, more eye attracting、uh, on the packaging there to get people to buy this product from the Whammo Toy Company. You know that brings us to the midway point in today's lesson. Let's take a break now and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 我们来看一下今天课文一刚开始就提到呢，人们前往公园或海滩的时候，后半句提到 some just want to relax. 有些人呢只想要放松一下，那么其他的人则想要做什么事呢？这样子的景象来说明一刚开始在讲到公园跟海滩会做的事情。所以这里第一句的 some 是一个很重要的提示。搭配上下文意，第一题我们可以选择 sentence E。E 选项里面提到 ，others however want to have some fun， so they often take a frisbee with them。那么其他人呢，则是想要玩的开心，所以会带着飞盘一起去。所以有些人想放松，其他人则想要玩的开心。而后面就开始说到呢，这个飞盘的运动，所以搭配上下的脉络，第一题的标准答案就选择一、e、选项。接着在第二个段刚开始的句子写到
The idea for the frisbee came from throwing metal pie plates and cookie tin lids around for entertainment. 在一刚开始呢，飞盘的构想呢，是来自于把金属制的馅饼盘跟饼干盒盖扔来扔去，来当做是一个娱乐。有了这样子的前提呢，后面提到呢，他创造了一个游戏叫做 Pluto Platter， 而且后面句子是 he 开头，所以一定是有一个人他出现了。在第二题，我们可以选择 C 选项。Sentence C 提到 ，A Californian named Fred Morrison sold the place cheaply on the beach in the late 1930s before coming up. With his own design, 一位呢名字叫做 Morrison 的美国加州人，他在西元一九三零年代的后期就在海滩上便宜的卖掉了这些盘子，然后就想出了他的设计。所以用这样子，前面提到的是金属制的馅饼盘跟饼干盒，后面提到这个人就呢想出了这样子的一个像飞碟一般的游戏。所以搭配文艺。第二题的标准答案，我们就选择 C 选项。接下来，我们看到第三个空格前面的句子提到 ，Around the same time, college students in Connecticut, U.S., were throwing pie plates made by a local bakery called Frisbee。在这里提到呢，在此同时呢，在康州的这些大学生们正在扔当地一家名叫做 Frisbee 面包店所。制作的馅饼盘。那么在这里，那我们可以选择第三题，选 F 选项。Sentence F 提到 ，This name stuck for the new design, but Wemo changed the spelling a bit, ending up with frisbee. 在这里，我们要注意提到的就是这家呢 bakery， 它的名字叫 Frisbee， 但是后来呢，这家玩具公司改变了它的 spelling， 变成了 F R I S B E E， 所以在这里就可以瞬间前面的句子，第三题的标准答案就选择 F 选项。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I wanted to mention skim. We used a lot when we're talking about reading a passage of text very quickly. You skim over the chapter. Perhaps you don't read it. Looking for a lot of details, you try to read it quickly. You also can use skim when you're throwing something in the smooth, gliding way over or near a surface.、Uh, you can throw a rock which skims、uh, the top of a lake.、Uh, that's kind of fun to see if you can get that rock to skip.、Uh, it's skimming over the surface here. Uh, you're not throwing near a surface so much, but it is kind of gliding over the grass. If you're、uh, in the park, or if you're at the beach, it's skimming over the sand. But、uh, I tend to throw my frisbee up a little higher than just trying to skim the surface, especially if I'm trying to get a dog to jump and get it. So, yeah, skim. Skim is a great word. You need to look it up. There, we use it in different ways, but I gave you the two that we use most often: to skim something, to scan it quickly.
So、um, now we've got a lot of people that are playing competitive sports with these frisbees. Competitive sports means there are actual competitions. Yeah, when I was growing up, we just did it for fun. No one really competed. Yeah, if someone made a good toss or a good throw, you congratulate them. Or if your dog jumped up and had a good catch, that would be cool. But、uh, now there's something called ultimate frisbee, and two teams compete with this particular game. Ultimate here just means like it's the best, you know. If something's the ultimate, it's just the best you can actually come to, or it's the most extreme of its kind. Ultimate, and the points are scored when someone catches the frisbee in the opposing team's end zone. So it's like football at the corner of the field. That's what we're talking about here: is the end zone. Opposing just means the person that you're competing against. I could also say a lot of people have opposing views on particular political issues. They don't agree with each other. They're in conflict. Here, they're opposing teams. Each of them wants to、uh, defeat the other team. Indeed, and、uh, of course, ultimate frisbee to me is just、uh, American football played with a frisbee.、Uh, there's a group of people here in Taiwan、yeah. that play it.、Uh, I know this guy, Eric. Ma, I think his name is.、Uh, he's part of a group of people who play ultimate frisbee on weekends right here in Taipei,、uh-huh. <laughs> and so that's one thing you can do with a disc here. Then there's frisbee golf, also called disc golf, which I believe is more common.、Uh, that's where participants aim at basket-like targets. Basically, it's golf played with discs, which is not very popular here in Taiwan. I believe there's one disc golf course. In Banshao, there I think、oh, it's、really? under the Da Han Bridge in、uh-huh. uh, Banshao. There, check it out if you want to play. You need、uh, special discs for that. They're smaller.、Uh-huh. They're not big as normal frisbees. So you pl- you throw them at basket-like targets, and like golf, the players' scores depend on how many throws it takes them to reach each target. So like golf, there's your tee off, there's your putting, and then there's your score. And the person with the lowest score wins the game. That sounds kind of fun. Now, even dogs have their own frisbee sport. Why not? Players throw frisbees to their pets, who catch them in agile and acrobatic ways, and of course are then awarded a score. This is my favorite thing to see: is a dog、uh, jumping up and catching a frisbee. They get so excited. <laughs> Dogs love to have you play with them. If you're talking about something that's agile, you're talking about something that's very flexible, able to move very quickly and easily. Agile.、Uh, some people who are agile would be、uh, gymnasts, dancers, people who can really twist and、um, shape their body much easier, much more easily than other people. Yoga、uh, fanatics, yo- yoga fans, they're usually more agile than other people. Acrobatic, of course, is someone who's doing tricks with their body. Acrobatics is what we call that. When you're young, you might be in an acrobatics class where you learn how to do a somersault, and maybe、uh, you know, I don't know, different things—a headstand, things like that. Those are acrobatics.、Right. And of course, again, even for the pets, they're given a score. Right, and I think they're quite popular because I've seen frisbees designed for dogs on sale here in Taiwan. Really?、Uh, so I think that's a, a popular activity. Dog frisbees—they're softer. <laughs> they're made. They're not made out of plastic. Oh, good. They're, so it doesn't hurt them. They're made out of some、him. kind of foam or something. Yeah. So, so it doesn't hurt their teeth. So that's one thing you can do with a frisbee. And new varieties of frisbee games are being invented. All the time. One thing they did not mention here、yeah. is freestyle frisbee,、uh, where you do various tricks with the frisbee. You try to spin it on your finger.、Uh, maybe you launch it up in the air, and then you spin around and catch it on your foot, or something like that. And you keep the disc spinning.、Uh, I've tried to learn how to spin a frisbee on my finger. It's a lot harder <laughs> than it looks. I'm still、yeah. not able to do it. It's very difficult. But that's one variety or one kind of frisbee game that is. Popular in different parts of the world. So there are new varieties of frisbee games、uh, being invented all the time. If you pay attention, you can see that、uh, it's amazing how this simple invention has provided so much fun in so many different ways. Amazing is just a word when we want to say something's really cool 
are really astonishing, very impressive, and an invention is actually something that someone thinks up. Uh, that they invent, that they come up with. Typically, it's sort of a process, or maybe it's a device that、uh, helps make life easier for people, or in this case, more fun for people, because that's just what frisbee is. Right, and the verb is to invent. Like uh, uh, the telephone was invented many years ago, or we could say the invention of the telephone changed communication forever. So, indeed, this、uh, simple invention, the frisbee, has provided. So much fun in so many different ways, and frisbees are available here in Taiwan. Although I don't think they are as popular as they are in Western countries.、Uh, if you go back to America or maybe Europe, you tend to see more people playing frisbee than you do here in Taiwan. But it is a rather simple way to play catch, and I've got a couple of frisbees myself, which I play sometimes with my daughter. But、uh, she's getting a little old for that. Although I have noticed、uh, some older people using、uh, frisbee as a way to exercise. Exercise in the mornings in some places, not every place, but in some places. So yeah, frisbees are pretty cool.、Uh, go purchase one yourself. Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher. 第四个空格，我们来看一下它前面的句子提到 ，For example, there's ultimate frisbee in which two teams compete. 在这里谈到的呢是飞盘争夺赛，会有两队在竞赛当中来竞争。既然两队，所以我们就要提一下谁赢谁得分。根据这样的脉络，第四题我们可以选择 sentence D。D 选项里面提到 ，points are scored when someone catches the frisbee in the opposing team's end zone。所谓呢，就是当有人在敌对的得分区接到飞盘的时候，就算得分。所以在这里就是补充说明前面提到的两队彼此竞争如何能够得分。第四题的标准答案就选择 D 选项。第五个空格前面的句子提到 ，Even dogs have their own frisbee sport。其实呢，就连狗呢，也是有自己的飞盘运动。狗要怎么进行飞盘运动呢？根据这样的脉络，第五题我们可以选择 A 选项。Sentence A 提到 ，Players throw frisbees to their pets, who catch them in agile and acrobatic ways, and are awarded a score. 这些呢，玩家会向他们的宠物丢飞盘，然后他们就会用很敏捷跟特技的方式接到飞盘，就能获得分数了。这里的 agile 也就是用敏捷的意思，而 acrobatic 则是有特技的意思。所以呢，第五题前面提到狗有自己的飞盘运动，后面就提到。主人可以向宠物扔飞盘。第五题的正确答案就选择 A 选项。OK， 以上就是今天的课文讲解，谢谢收听。Okay, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Thank you so much for joining us, and please join us again next time for another edition of our program. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.